All right, well, welcome back, Chelsea fans, to a special London Is Blue podcast. Uh, we're going to be doing another one of our Chelsea DNA series episodes here. So we're at Chelsea's training ground with Fikeo Tamori. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, nice to, have, nice to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, absolutely. So uh, we're here interviewing players just to get to know a little bit better as fans what the DNA at Chelsea is. And what we want to do is get to, you know, start with someone who's been here, you know, since the age of seven. Uh, obviously spent 11 years until you got to make your first team debut. And then here we are this season, not only making debuts, scoring worldies and having a blast. <laughs> so uh, we'll definitely get into all of that. Um, so I guess, you know, rewinding back to the beginning. Did you have any idea what it meant to join Chelsea at the U8 level? Like, at that point, was it like, hey, this is a big club, this is a big opportunity? Um, or are you too young? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that point in time, I was just kind of like, oh, well, it's something different to what I'm used to because I was just playing with my friends and playing for my Sunday team uh, back home. And then, um, you know, I think that, you know, everyone else kind of made a bigger deal of it than me because I think they're like, oh, it's Chelsea. And I was like, well, it's not really the actual Chelsea kind of thing. Like, I didn't really understand that it was, you know, like the first team were literally, you know, a couple of pitches away in this in, in effect basically. So um yeah, back then it was more just kind of like a change of environment, but I didn't really understand it too much. So uh, what age was it that you actually realized that it was a big deal? When did it click for you? Probably like under nines, under tens when you sign like contracts and stuff and then, you know, sometimes the first team come and, you know, like remember John Terry used to come sometimes and when we're training in the dome and come say hi to everyone and you know that's when you think oh well yeah like the the players <laughs> actually here this is actually Chelsea and um and then obviously the 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 kind of players you play with you know even at that young age where you know when I was at Sunday team I could you know run past people and then suddenly you get here and then it's not so easy but um yeah you know it was uh like I said it was just one of those things where you just kind of you know enjoy it and yeah it was a uh, it became a big deal about that time yeah so you mentioned John. Obviously, are there other you know kind of at, at that age significant players or managers that kind of helped shape those early days? Yeah. So when I first came, uh, it was this when Jose Mourinho just just became manager, um, and then obviously there was people like Drogba, Sen, Mikel, obviously the manager now. You know, loads of those players that you know you see on you know match of the day and stuff, and then you know suddenly you know they're you know in the same sort of place as you. So. Um, you know, those kind of um, times is when, um, you know, you just kind of look back on it and, you you know, you just smile because it's just like, you know, back then it was just like, you know, that it seems so far away and now, you know, there you see them, you know, all the time. No, that's fantastic. I know. What a what a time to, like, grow up through those years, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just trophy, another trophy, yeah. just, you know, <laughs> racking them up. Um, so what have some of the goals been throughout your career that really gotten you to the first team at Chelsea, whether it's winning youth cups, maybe, you know, getting blooded in the lower leagues and things like that? Like, have there been a couple milestones that you're like, hey, I've achieved it. All right. I'm that much closer to. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, when you're coming up through the youth team, um, you get to about under 16s. Um, you know, the youth cup becomes more of um, a realistic goal for you. And, you know, obviously Chelsea always do well in the youth cup. So, um, you know, when you see them winning it, you know, you want to be. You want to get in there and you want to win it and you know because it's on tv so you want to you know you want to have all your friends or family be able to watch you on tv and stuff so then winning the youth cups was one thing and then obviously the youth leagues as well um you know having that sort of platform to kind of show yourself and you know then obviously it comes to the loans and stuff like that and you now i've had you know three loans and you know each one was pretty different but i learned a lot from all of them so i think that all of them are kind of milestones in themselves um because you know it gives you a chance to kind of you know, get used to the first team environment, playing professional football, playing against, you know, players that have played game the game for like 15 years and, you know, you're just cup starting. So, you know, you learn things from your teammates and then playing against the players that are, you know, that are, you know, seasoned professionals. So, um, and especially in the championship where it's just, you know, Saturday, Tuesday, every game is so hard. So, um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, the loans definitely are probably the milestones, I'd say, where, you know, that, that grew me as a player and as a person as well. Was there anything, so it was a, a half-season loan at Brighton, yeah. it was a full season at Hull, and then it was a full season at Derby. Yeah. Was there one thing that you say you would take from each of those loans that really kind of helped to shape your development? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the half-season at Brighton, um, when I got there, you know, they were top of the league in the championship, and, you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to, you know, just walk into the team. I was 18, and, um, no, it's more about, you know, 
getting used to that first team environment. Uh, you know, when I play, you know, having people help me, you know, learning off people. And, um, you know, the manager, Chris Hutton, you know, he spoke to me a lot, um, you know, what he wanted me to do, how he wanted me to improve. And, um, you know, being in that sort of winning environment, sort of dressing room where, you know, every game they needed to win to get promoted. And then at Hull, it was a bit different because, you know, they just come down from the Premier League and then we didn't start the season too well. And then you know, throughout the season, you know, we were pretty much hovering above the relegation zone. So, you know, that was a different kind of mental test to kind of, um, you know, keep going, you know, thinking, OK, next match we have to win, next match we have to win. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, you're in the team, sometimes you're out of the team because the team, you know, needed some some shaking up sometimes for a game. So, um yeah, that that loan just was different in the sense of you know you're not in the team every week, so you're not you don't have that kind of in your back of mind like okay, I'll be in the team kind of thing, and um you know you have to keep training well, and then obviously sometimes the team loses, and then you know you're wondering oh I didn't I, I played and we lost, so does that mean I'm going to be out? But then you know we stayed up, and you know that was I think that was one of the that full year really uh you know toughened me up mentally, you know. And obviously, I had Ola there with me as well, so we we were able to share the experience together. And then Derby, you know, I was a bit lucky because um I got there, and then you know Curtis Davis got injured, so then I was straight in, and then I did pretty well. And then um, you know, that was a different sort of mentality because we you know we were pushing for the playoffs, we were kind of getting getting in there and then maybe drop out, and then maybe we'd lose the game, and you know the people behind us would catch up, and then you know that 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 loan playing every week. Um, you know, it was it was good because then, you know, I had to be consistent. I had to, you know, gain the trust of the players, the manager, you know, to keep me in the team and, you know, obviously to play well and then obviously we, we made the playoff final. Obviously we didn't uh we didn't get promoted, but you know, that in itself was it was a great experience. I th- I think you did more than just okay with that one. You won <laughs> <laughs> you won player of the year, um, on loan, which is you not say it's rare because I think it's happened before, yeah. but I mean it certainly has to be, you know, really heartening for you. Uh, going to a different environment mm. with a manager that you may know a little yeah. bit better than than most, but you tell us a little bit about that. I mean, for you, you, know, you obviously might have got a little bit lucky to start playing so early in the yeah, season, yeah. but you clearly had to keep earning it as you went. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as I said, you know, Curtis Davis got injured, and then now I was kind of, you know, we played against Leeds, and everyone was talking about Leeds, and you know, they they won the first game, um, you know, and they played really well, and then. You know, suddenly I was playing in the game after having two or three training sessions, and then after that, you know, I was just thinking, okay, I've just got to just got to play well as much as I can. And then in my head, I was thinking, okay, Curtis is going to come back, so I need to, you know, I need even if he's going to come back in, I need to be right on the cusp so that I can, you know, if the manager needs me, I can go back in. And then, yeah, I just managed to to do really well. Um, obviously, I had the manager trust and. You know, he he gave me a lot of confidence, and you know, obviously he was playing me, and he was giving me that um, that trust and the faith in me to 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 play. And then, you know, having Mason as well there, and Harry Wilson, people that I knew there, obviously made it a lot more comfortable. And obviously Jody as well. Yeah. So talking about that, was it? Did you feel like it was a a good decision to go to Derby with Frank and Jody there, especially as you're still tied to Chelsea? Going there, you're like, well, I'm still gonna have that connection to the club. They're gonna, you know be coming with that Chelsea mentality anyways mm. like did that kind of cross your mind as well yeah I mean uh, um I went you know towards the end towards the end of the um the the se- the transfer window sorry and um yeah I was I was close to you know there was a few clubs that were going around and then when um Eddie Newton actually told me that um oh, um Frank Lampard from Derby's um on, he said that he wants to to sign yours and then from that time I was like okay well I have to go to Derby. Like, it was just <laughs> it was kind of a no-brainer, you know, not just because of Chelsea, but because of who he is, you know, right. and, you know. So, um, and then obviously it made more sense because obviously I know Jody, so Jody knows how I am as a person. So, you know, that 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 definitely helped me to keep my levels up because he's seen me from when I was what 15, 16 years old. So he knows how I am, how I am when I play well, and he knows that you know when I'm playing badly, you know, he can tell me. So, um, yeah, that I think that it made a lot of sense to go there, and you know, even with that Chelsea connection, it didn't really wasn't really in my mind as much because, you know, whenever you go on loan, you always have that connection with Chelsea anyway. But, you know, going there, having that sort of Chelsea connection didn't really um, play a factor, I guess you could say. It was just one of those things where, yeah, he's a manager from Chelsea, I'm from Chelsea. But in a way, it kind of made sense to go there rather than having that sort of, oh, yeah, I've still got that connection for Chelsea rather than a different kind of loan. So I think that it actually worked in my favour. 
So you actually had your debut for the first team in the 15-16 season. Um, what did that mean for your journey uh, in terms of getting into the first team, and how did that kind of set you up to kind of maybe put the hunger in you to get back into being there? Yeah, um, you know, Tommy and I were actually talked about this the other day that, um, you know, that seems so far far away ago. And um, well, I mean, we, We've got the kit, you know? Oh, uh, yeah? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is probably a special one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got the shirt at home from the from the from the game. Um, yeah, no. mine's not match worn. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, no. I remember we, we were, Tommy and I were on the bench. Tommy obviously made his debut against Liverpool, and then you know at Anfield, and you know you see the the crowd and everything. You're like, wow, this is this is real. And then coming on to make your Premier League debut, and you know I played against Leicester when they just just were champions. So you know all these players, like I said, you know you see them on the match of the day, you see them playing on on the TV, and then <laughs> suddenly. You're on the same pitch as them, and then you know you got players like William Hazard, uh, Asp was you know, was on the pitch, and you know it was just it was crazy. And that's when um, as I got back in the change room, I remember thinking like, wow, I just played for Chelsea, and it was just it was crazy. And then yeah, those are the kind of things that you know they they push you to to want more because you you just want to experience it, you want to have it all the time, you want to you know be on that pitch, you know week in week out, you want to be you know talked about, and um. Yeah, it definitely was a uh, was that definitely put more hunger in my belly to 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 achieve that. So, as we kind of bring it back to the Chelsea DNA piece, because it sounds like you've definitely you know had the journey that's you know gotten you to this point, mm. rightfully so. Um, what does Chelsea DNA mean to you as a player who's kind of come through the system? Like, what are the characteristics or the traits you think that really means to to be Chelsea? I mean, it's just winning, you know. You yeah, just, I love it. We're good. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's just winning, you know. You, the, the club has high standards, um, and uh, you know the club is used to winning trophies, the big trophies, you know, Premier League, Champions League, Europa Leagues, uh, FA Cups, all of them. And um, you know, you you know, you have to to get in the team. You have to reach that standard. You have to be that 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 um that caliber. And um, yeah, I think that you know that's another part where. You know, gives you the, the hunger and the motivation because when you see you know the past players winning it and stuff, and you know you see the pictures around the 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 building of the players winning trophies, you know, you know you want to be that you want to be those players. You want to be that player that you know plays in that game that won that trophy that did this for the club and you know for the club and for yourself as well. So um, yeah, those are the things that I think um you know, that that you know make Chelsea Chelsea really. You're you're now a regular in the first team. You're scoring bangers uh, week in, week out now. Um, <laughs> um, how can you, you know, we're, we're talking about kind of the, the past up till now. How can you kind of take this momentum into the future and be kind of the next generation um, of Chelsea talent that, that continues to win? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, obviously, you know, having a manager, as I said, you know, he's putting a lot of faith in the young players and, you know, we just want to, <clears throat> we just want to take the opportunity and, and I think that is is good as well because we're all kind of you know the same age ish and um, you know we all were there to help each other and then mm-hmm. obviously we have got the first team players that are helping us and you know that that just makes it a lot lot easier to play. Um, you know we know that um, you know this year it, there's going to be difficult patches but you know this is part of the learning this is part of the development for us as players and then I think the team as well. So yeah, it's just, um it's exciting. Um, you know it's it's motivating because. You know, playing in the Premier League is you know what everyone wants to do as a kid. You know, you want to play in the Premier League, you want to play for the big clubs and stuff. And you know, to to have that sort of you know beginning of the season that taster where I'm you know I'm playing, I'm in the team. You know, I just want to maintain that and keep on improving and keep my place. Awesome, well, Fakao, it's been fantastic to get to talk to you. Like as fans from the U.S., we have nothing but support for you. Yeah. We hope you have the greatest season as possible. Winning titles with Chelsea <laughs> and maybe a few more goals too. Hopefully, um, hopefully, I'll try. I'll try. Hey, but honestly, thank you so much. Uh, but you know, we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Thank you. It was fun.